Greetings. Welcome to the Film School. I'm Chris. And I'm Joe. And we are reviewing The Irishman. So uh, we're going to take a look at something real quick. It is an honor to present this award to my dear friend, Mr. Frank Sheeran. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you so much. It's like once in a career in your life that yes. you assemble this group together. Hi, Frank. This is Jimmy Hoffa. Would you like to be a part of this history? Yes, I would. Just seeing the black and white photos of Frank Sheeran himself, we just knew that Bob was perfect. Hey, voila. He could inhabit that character and be that character. I, I know I wasn't a good dad. I know that. But I was just trying to, to protect all of you. From what? From everything. We knew that the only person who could play Buffalino would be would be Joe. Better watch. There's a lot of tough guys around here. Did he tell you? Joe was playing a character that was more subdued and more low key. That was a good change for him. Frank, I had to put you into this thing. All right, beautiful guys. Okay. Bob and Al always wanted to do something substantial together. And I had never worked with Al before. And so it was a real pleasure to watch the two of them, particularly in the scene where Frank's character finally has to tell Jimmy that there's a serious problem. Jimmy, I'm trying to tell you something. I know you are. You're telling me to threatening me and I gotta do what they say, which is but it's more absolutely than a threat. It's the bottom line. To me, it was like if I were a tightrope walker and Marty is the net, you feel you can go and you can take a chance. That's it. It's very clear. <laughs> if Martin Scorsese says, hey, I want you to be in my movie, there is no needing for enticing. There's a very inherent trust between those guys. It's a classic story about loyalty, brotherhood, betrayal. They're like family to me, Frank. At the end of the day, the interaction between the characters is what will make it work. I'm behind you, Jimmy, all the way. We did all we could for the man. Anyway, it's directed by Martin Scorsese. I'm not sure what number of his film it oh, is. Oh, jeez. Yeah, it's, it's know, up there. 20-something, yeah. 30-something film. But, you know. 1967 or 68 when he made, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, Who's That Knocking at My Door? Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. It's a long, long career with this guy but you know what is this his fourth gangster movie i mean there was mean streets goodfellas casino you know, man and now the irishman yeah and i have to say man this was a beautiful film i really well, gangs of new york too it's a different but it's, it's yeah, old school but yeah right. you mean like mafia right yeah. mafia sorry i didn't mean to interrupt <laughs> oh you're kidding <laughs> but you know it's got his usual cast robert de niro joe pesci harvey keitel some new ones for him, Al Pacino. You don't think yeah. he's ever worked with Al Pacino before? No, this is his first film with Al Pacino. hoo But, you know, I think it's the third film that him and De Niro have been in together. Because they did Heat together and yeah. Righteous Kills. Yeah. I think this is the third film. And then this one. Yeah. So. But, yeah, Martin Scorsese has never directed Pacino in one of his films. So. Or Ray Romano. Let's not forget. Well... He did direct the first episode of that series on HBO. Uh, was that that uh, about the music industry? Oh, Get Shorty? Boardwalk no. Empire. No. No, he did do Boardwalk he Empire. Work, oh, but yeah. it was, uh, they canceled it. It was called Vinyl something. Oh, Vinyl, Vinyl, yeah. 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 He did. Ray really? Romano was in that. He, Mark Scorsese was a producer, like an executive hmm. producer. So they've that. worked together before. Yeah. Okay. So. Interesting. Yeah. I'll be quiet. <laughs> quiet, you. But it was uh, written by Steven Zillion. He wrote Searching for Bobby Fischer, Schindler's List, and Civil, Civil Action. Action John That's Travolta. John Travolta as the attorney. Right. Um, so, so, on the, so I, while you were gone, enjoying the festivities elsewhere uh, over this Thanksgiving holiday, I uh, did a non-spoiler review that you've seen. Uh, so we covered some of the technical ground on that, but... And, and kind of how I felt about the film, uh, but I'd like to know what your thoughts on the film were. I, you know, I mean, it's three hours and 30 minutes, and, you you know, it doesn't seem that long to me. I thought, it, I just, I enjoyed every minute of it. I really did. Yeah. You know, and everybody's 
you know, talking about the anti-aging or whatever, how it's distracting. I didn't think it was that distracting. No. I mean, if you look close enough, but you could pull that thread off of a lot of things, right? There's a lot of movies where if you look at, if you notice the visual effects in The Wizard of Oz, if that's what you're looking for, then right. you're like, uh, but... But I thought I thought it they did part a good of the job. storytelling. Yeah. I thought it did a, a good job at conveying the idea, right? Right. Yeah. But I mean, Robert De Niro hasn't had a great performance in a while. He he, he is brilliant in this yeah. movie. And Joe Pesci, you know, like you said in that non-spoiler, he, you know, it, like kind of a he was reserved yeah. you know, from his other roles like Goodfellas and Casino. Yeah. Totally, he was awesome in it. Harvey Keitel, you know, would have been better if he was in it more. But you know, every scene he's in, he's good. Yeah, he's, scenes, the scenes he's, he's in. Tell. Is it me or is Joe Pesci like gotten thinner? Yeah, it seems. I don't know. It seems like it. Maybe. How long has he been retired now? I think he retired in '99. Wow. So this. So he didn't even make a film for the last 20 years until now. That's insane. Because it just kind of dawned on me a few years back. Like, what happened to Joe Pesci? It just right. kind of, kind of quietly faded away. And to be honest with you, it was it was good to see him uh, in in a Scorsese movie, but again, totally different type of character than what he normally plays. You know, the, I loved it. The production design was amazing. The cinematography was was beautiful. Yeah, and um, kind of a work of art. Yeah, I especially mean, the slow motion scenes. Right. Even the, even the ones that kind of lingered a little bit, it doesn't matter. They were just nice to look at. Like, it just helped with the moodiness of this film. It's kind of a mood piece. No handheld shots, you know. Yeah. It's, all, it's all nice and framed. Yeah. They actually framed a movie. It's amazing. It's weird, too, because you... I think, you know, nobody really does that anymore. It's kind of old technique but then there are a lot of filmmakers that still use those techniques right and i love it it's refreshing it looked like a movie not a television series you know because i think i think the whole handheld thing is is taking over television now too and that most part that whole scene you know towards like the very i guess it wasn't right at the end but it was close to the end where joe pesci's character um Gives the order pretty much to take Jimmy Hoffa out, and then yeah. just like you can see the disappointment, you know, like he doesn't want to fucking do it because I'm mean, sorry, he doesn't want to do it because that's like his, you know, his friend. I mean, yeah, and that whole that's that's the scene that where they're driving to to meet him, and it was it was intense. I thought it was mm-hmm. you know it was yeah very well put together and and spoilers here. So uh, spoiler was it summon you right now mm, spoiler wizard um it was it was quite abrupt and just kind of to the point where he actually shoots when he, when right. frank <laughs> sharon takes out jimmy hoffa was intense you know and al pacino was great um you know he plays jimmy hoffa he was the head of the teamsters union trucking union i don't was it like 50s to the 60s yeah 60s around there and uh, he definitely plays it different than Jack Nicholson did in the previous Hoffa movie. Right, which was written by David Mamet, directed by Danny, Danny DeVito. DeVito. Co-starred in it, too. Right. Which is a good film in its own right. But right. now we know if this story is true, and there's still debate on whether or not Frank Sheeran actually killed Jimmy Hoffa. Right. Um, if it is true, then the, the 1995 Hoffa movie is a little inaccurate. I kind of hope this is true, because that would actually be really interesting... That they finally solved it, you know. I mean, that that's no longer a mystery. Right. But who knows? Because Frank Sheeran died in two thousand three, book was published in two thousand five, and they're still debating it. You know, fourteen years later. So <laughs> it's like JFK and Amelia Earhart. It's just one of those mysteries we'll probably never solve. Right. Right. Exactly. But yeah, I mean, how many stars would you rate that one? Oh, I I definitely give this four out of four. I I loved this movie. Yeah. I thought it was brilliant. Do you think it'd wind up in your your top five yeah. best films of the year? Mm-hmm. I think I think mine too. As I said before, we're gonna do an episode. Uh, we're probably gonna actually wait till maybe beginning of the year, like like really the beginning of the year, to do like a, a kind of a countdown of our maybe twenty top twenty films we think you should go 
or we think you should not go and see because most of them are going to be out of the theater, but just the top 20 films that we liked the most over 2019 because there have been a ton of films this year that have been worth watching. And we'll also throw out some some films you should avoid, most of which we've already reviewed anyways. So if you if you watch our channel, you follow our videos. Yeah, hey, you, maybe we'll them. even do like the worst, you know, list maybe <laughs> of our five worst movies of the year. I don't know. We could, yeah. <laughs> we'll figure that one out. But anyways, yeah, I, I totally recommend you taking the time to see this on Netflix. Uh, it's too bad you, you you know a lot of people out there didn't get a chance to see yeah. it on the big screen. And I was so happy that we went and saw mm. it on the big screen. I mean, and our theater was packed. It was. Too. It was way packed. So. <laughs> Which was surprising because I showed up and I just this line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, you're so mad at me. Sorry, dude. Anyway. <laughs> I wasn't mad. I was just I didn't expect there to be this huge line for a film that was just playing for the weekend. I should have figured. I just thought most people would like, oh, it's on Netflix. Why would I pay money to see it on the beautiful big screen where it was intended to be seen when I could just stay at home and like watch it on Netflix and pause it when I gotta make a snack or whatever. That's not the way to watch this movie. But now you have no choice, so watch it on Netflix. Yep. <laughs> yeah. As a it was a really good film, and I hope that this isn't Martin Scorsese's, like, swan song. I hope this isn't his final... feels like it's his swan song to, like, his mafia films, though. Like, yeah. Like, he's probably done with those now. Now that he's in his twilight years, he'll probably focus on some different... Uh, I heard he's working on another documentary about, uh... A third one about Bob Dylan? No, I, I actually think it's somebody in the band, so... Really? Oh yeah, because Robbie Robertson did the music for this, and, so, but and he did he had the waltz, and I'm not a fan of the band, so <clears> myself. <throat> but Robbie Robertson did a good score. Yeah. But another thing I liked. Are you going to pick up that the soundtrack when it comes out on vinyl? Yeah, I I would. I think I would it. too. If it's mostly like if it's got some some of the pieces by Robbie Robertson, cool. But I want the songs that were used. Yeah. The very period songs. Um, you know, from the early '50s or the late '40s, all the way through the through the '60s and even '70s, right? It's a good good choice of songs. Really, kind of obscure, probably kind of minor hits of the time, and a lot of stuff that it, it, you definitely think of mafia guys is listening to. You know, so yeah, great film. Yeah, we are now uh, just a few days after Thanksgiving, and uh, we said we would post a video. About a week after Thanksgiving for the raffle for our Criterion Collection giveaway for the reaching our 100th subscriber. So a few people have uh, subscribed, commented, and liked. Uh, it would be awesome if we could get a few more of you before we release this uh, raffle video. Yes. Uh, you know. Please. Like and subscribe and comment. Let us know. Like, yeah. you hated the movie, you love the movie, you hate me, you hate Joe, whatever. Like... Or you like our rantings and you think it's insightful and entertaining. And no. We like to just vent our opinions on films, you know, but in a friendly, safe environment, right? Yeah. You mean I you mean, didn't like that movie? No, I'm I'm mean, just kidding. We respect everybody's opinion. Everybody has yep. an opinion. It's what makes yep. the world go round. <laughs> unless, unless the world's actually flat. But that's another story <laughs> for another for another episode <laughs> Shit. that we'll never talk about. Nope. So thank you for joining us, and uh, we'll see you in the next episode. Yes. Seasons greetings. Like and subscribe, please. Till next time. <laughs>